Hi guys, um, we've had a, an update for Lightroom and Photoshop this morning. Um, we are dated at uh, Tuesday the 12th of February 2019. Good God, you can't believe we're a month and a half into 2019. <sighs> Brexit will soon be here. Formula One will soon be here. And it will soon be Christmas. Yes, I remember. Nice, eh? What? So, so we've had this update for Lightroom and Photoshop, as I said this morning, and the Lightroom one um, seems to be, or did seem to be quite interesting because there was a new thing on it. And if we go to, um, where are we, photo, um, I'm sort of recording on two different computers at once here, and you'll understand why in a minute. So. The microphone's in a bit of a funny place. So if we're in the develop module, I've got a raw file open here. And if we go to photo, we've now got this funny little thing here. Enhanced details. Woo! What's that all about, Andy? Right, so I'll click enhanced details. And the first thing I get is system update required. Enhanced details requires Mac OS 1013 or later. In other words, it will only work on High Sierra or Mojave. Yes. Now, this sort of uh, pissed me off. There you go, I've used a naughty word. It pissed me off because Adobe forced Mac users into an OS update not so long ago with Photoshop. And uh, it forced us, those of us who were still working with good old rock steady stable El Capitan with absolutely flawless colour management and um, we had to all move up to either OS Sierra or High Sierra and um, really and truly if when I um, moved up from El Capitan I did a bit of research on the old hinterweb and in quite a lot of places you see a lot of Geekbench type reports on the differences between um, Sierra and High Sierra and in general the upshot of it all is that or was from my research was that Sierra was actually a wee bit faster than High Sierra so of course I opted for the Sierra installation um, I should have known better shouldn't I but well and I just cannot be bothered at the moment to update my main machine my main image processing machine but i do have just outside of your camera view uh, down here uh, my macbook pro which is running high sierra so what we're going to do now is to switch over machines and i'm going to start working on this and we will look at yes enhanced details so if i sort of put that down there and i come to my magic mouse and <laughs> i'm gonna so forgive me if i'm sort of looking down here instead of there or there but i will try and maintain eye contact with you good people so let's have a little bit of a dive in so i've got this raw file here and it's i can't remember why i did it it's it's a raw file that exists in my um, sharpening training I shot it specially for me sharpening training videos from earlier on well earlier on last year um, but that's by the by we've got this raw file and we're going to go to photo and we're going to go and see what enhanced details is all about now what it does it actually goes and produces a DNG file yes it does so we'll click enhanced details and we get this enhanced details preview box comes up and it is quite a gpu intensive uh, bit of kit this is and so it takes a bit of time uh, it does on this uh, map macbook pro anyway so here we've got a, a eye magnification preview of this raw file and it's, it's proving a bit difficult to scroll around on it but we'll come to this in a minute but without the enhancements and then if we click it goes enhanced and to be quite honest with you I can't see a difference 
No, I can't. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to produce the DNG. And then once we've got that in Lightroom, it will alleviate the load on the GPU. And we can sort of go and see what's happening. Now you can see here, it says an estimated time of nine minutes. This feature is computationally intensive and performs best with a fast GPU. Nine minutes. I wonder how long it is going to take. So let's just go and click Enhance. And uh, as we can see at the top there on the left, it's creating the DNG. And it's uh, quite slow, but at the speed it's going, I don't think it's going to take nine minutes. But, you know, we will wait and see. And uh, we'll soon find out how long it is when uh, in the video timeline, won't we? But I might have to speed it up a little bit, so we'll see. And there we go. Yes, look at that. We've got it. It's done. It didn't take nine minutes, but I was thinking about falling asleep. But then I remembered I was on camera, so I thought I hadn't better. Now then, um, let's just go and have a look at the original RAW file together with this DNG. Um, I'm holding the keys down on the wrong on the wrong keyboard. <laughs> there we go. And uh, let's just take them into let's go into the uh, library view, and we'll just compare the two. And you can see we've got the enhanced DNG over here on the left, and we've got the original raw file on the right. And really and truly, I'm damned if I can see a difference. But what we will do is, with the two images selected, we'll right click and we'll go edit in, and we'll open his layers in Photoshop. There he is, the man with no head. Yes. And we will be able to quantify the difference between the raw file and the enhanced DNG if we put them in layers over the top of each other and then put them in the difference blend mode. Yes, which is what we're doing now. So we've got the enhanced DNG over the top and there is the original raw file underneath. And so we're going to put the Enhanced DNG2 layer into the Difference Blend Mode. And there we go. Now, ostensibly, all you can see is a black rectangle. Really and truly, I can't see a difference here. Not even if I blow it up to 100% can I see a difference. However... If I go and put an adjustment layer over the top, like a levels adjustment layer, and then we sort of get the mid-tone slider for the levels adjustment, and wang it all the way over to the left, now you can see that there is a difference between the enhanced detailed DNG and the original RAW file. Is the difference noticeable? I mean, obviously it's noticeable here because of this stupid levels adjustment we've put on, which nobody in the right mind would ever do. But if we come out to a fit to screen view and then just sort of magnify it up just a little bit, you can see we've got some really strange, um, sort of grid-like, granularity going on there so it's done something really really peculiar to the image but ostensibly without um, that levels adjustment on and if we put this um, layer back into the normal blend mode I mean we can go up to what let's just sort of come across here let's have a look at Queen there she is Let's have a look at these scratches. Honest to God, this pound coin looks, it looks like it's been through the sun, doesn't it? But if we look at the Queen's head on this pound coin, and then all these scratches, the imperfections, this little bit of pocket lint here, and then we've got the contrasting copperage behind. That that we're looking at now is the enhanced DNG. And let's take it up a little bit more. So we're looking at it at 200% magnification. And if I turn it off, 
we'll be looking at the original raw file. So that's enhanced, that's unenhanced. In other words, that's the normal standard raw file. Just taken into Lightroom and then scooted into Photoshop, nothing fancy. And no matter how much I flick this on and off, if anything, I actually find the original is possibly, oh, by a smidging of a fraction of a percent sharper. I don't quite understand what this enhanced detail, uh, DNG functionality, is all about. And I hate to say it, and I know lots of people are going to disagree with me, but it just makes me feel that Adobe have answered a question that nobody was really asking. I certainly wasn't. Um, I'm perfectly happy with what it does or what it was doing before. And so we've got this sort of, to me, unwarranted adjustment or adjustment potential that's surreptitiously forcing you into yet another um, Mac OS version redundancy. And is this a portent of things to come? Um, I'm, I don't know, and I'm not really all that happy about it, but well, there you go. Um, will I be updating my big machine here to um, Iciera? Uh, well, I can be bothered getting round to it, but this particular adjustment um, availability in the new version of Lightroom is certainly not going to encourage me to get round and do the upgrade any sooner. So there you go. Uh, as I said, I'm pretty certain some people will disagree with me and they'll say, oh, this new adjustment in Lightroom is fabulous. Yeah, I'd love them to show me how. Anyway, there you go, folks. That's just my opinion. And everybody's got one and we all know what people's opinions are like. But hey, that's just me. So hope you've got something from this video. Hope you found it useful. If you have, give it a like. Um, if you don't, uh, feel free to give it a dislike. Uh, it's up to you. Um, click the subscribe button. Click the ringety tingety bell. And uh, the other thing I've got to do is say a continued thanks to my patrons who make my production of these videos on my YouTube possible. Okay. So there we go. Thanks, guys. See you later. True root.